Hi everybody, um, my name is Emily Nielsen and I am the author and the illustrator of this new book. It's called Can I Give You a Squish? And being the author and the illustrator means that I wrote the book and drew the pictures. So today I'm going to do um, a little art demonstration. Uh, I'm going to be drawing one of the characters from the book and you're welcome to join along. Um, but I'm also going to be talking about uh, how I made my book um, but more importantly, how you can make your own books. Uh, because I know right now it feels like there are a lot of things that you can't do, or that it feels like maybe you have to be careful about, but uh, one thing that you can absolutely do is get out some printer paper and get a pencil and make your own book. Because <laughs> it can be a great way to um, both, both sort of escape and use your imagination and come up with a lot of really crazy ideas, but it can also be a really good way to um, figure out what you're feeling and put, um, put your anger in a book or put your sadness in a book, put whatever you're feeling uh, into a story. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to start with um, uh, reading a little bit from this book. Um, and if you, if you like this book, if you think it's fun or want to see more, um, you can buy it really anywhere books are sold, so Amazon, all of the places. Just just give it a Google. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to go over to my computer desk because that's where a lot of the drawing is going to happen. So let's go. All right. Can I Give You a Squish by Emily Nielsen. Kai gave his mama a big squish. I love giving squishes, he said. The rest of the morning, Kai gave out squishes. He squelched some kelp and squashed a rock and scrunched some buried treasure. He even gave his friends a big group squish. And I'm going to stop here, but uh, so right now, all we've really established is that Kai is our main character, and he really loves giving squishes, which are hugs. But, of course you have to have conflict in a book, and that happens pretty soon, because Kai Pete meets a pufferfish who does not like squishes. And so I'll leave you to figure out what happens in the book from here. But I wanted to talk about, first off, what this book looked like before it looked like this. Because when you sit down and try to make a book, it doesn't come out looking like this, and it doesn't come out with a complete story. Instead, that's something that, that you work on over and over again. And you can definitely write a story in one go, but it probably won't be as finished as this, and that's totally fine, that's normal. In fact, this is what this book looked like early on. And you can see these two images are pretty similar to what I got later, but um, but most of the other ones are much rougher. Um, you can see here, like, that's, that's not too bad. I've definitely had characters that look less like themselves than that. But, um, oh, like this. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is sort of what my sketches look like. They're not neat, they're really messy, and they're just there to help me figure out what the story should be. Uh, and so I, I just say that to encourage you to not worry too much um, about what your pictures look like and try to just tell a complete story. Try, try to like um, work on your characters and make them, make them people that you like or animals that you like or anything. Um, that's a really fun part of storytelling is that um, it really doesn't matter very much what they look like. It matters much more what they do. So then I thought I'd show you a few of the next steps. Um, these are sort of funny things I made while working on the book, and that was to sort of help me. So once I had this figured out, and I had written the book, and sort of had worked out what the pictures would look like, I wanted to get here, and I had no idea how to get there. So at each, le at each stage, um, I would draw the best images I could and print them out however I could, and I'd make them into a little book that I could carry around and look at, which was really helpful. But it's kind of cool to see how, how far this, this grows. 
um, as you as you go along. So let's see, we've got that one. And then next up we have this one. You see I've started to add a little color, but I still haven't really figured stuff out. Like they aren't fully painted. I have a lot of work to do. And then the finished image looks like this. So you can see I've gotten done a lot more work between these two these two pictures. But it's funny because I've done a lot of work in terms of making it look more like what it is, but I haven't done much more storytelling. Like this this shows the story just as well as this does. Um, there isn't really a difference in the moment. Instead, the difference is in what we call rendering, which is the, the difference in a drawing. All right, so next I'm going to guide you through drawing one of the characters. And the character we're gonna draw today is this little crab, and he's really funny. Um, I'll show you one of, uh, one of the times that I think he's especially funny. Um, right here, when he's offering a claw pinch to everybody, and they are not on board. So, let's move over to our drawing. I'm going to draw just on paper, because I find that to be much easier. Even though I, I tend to paint things in the computer, I still like to draw on paper. All right, so we've got our little crab here um, and our paper and pencil. So the first step, and I'm gonna draw kind of dark so that you guys can see, is to draw this upside down U shape. And it's okay if it leans kind of one direction because then you can make your crab lean one direction. And the next thing I'm going to draw are the eyes. And these kind of cute little eyes. It's a little lopsided, I'll make it bigger. And color it in. And give them a, a big smile. looks pretty happy. All right, now for some little claws. I'll draw the general shapes for them first and then go back in for the pointy bits. And then this is the fun part. Swoop, swoop, swoop. And then now it's time for some legs. There we go, little crab. Maybe we can give him a little, little rock to stand on. We could give him some plants. Those are fun. And I find it's really fun when I'm making drawings to uh, to do some things that I just make up that are just kind of fun for me and then do other things that are very rooted in, in reality. So I like to look up lots of pictures of sea creatures if I'm doing a book on sea creatures or um, lots of lots of reference pictures. If I'm drawing a chair, I want to look up a bunch of chairs so that I have an idea of which which kinds I like the best um, and that can be really really fun and add a lot of dimension to your drawings if instead of just a made-up crab you're drawing a crab that looks a little bit real. Alright so the next step that I'm going to do um, that you guys probably won't be able to do at home is I'm going to put it into the computer and I'm going to paint over it with with the computer uh, but you can always just paint 
or draw over yours with colored pencils or markers or whatever you like to color with. So let's color. Alright, so I've scanned my crab and I'm going to bring him into my drawing program. So if you've got your colored pencils, you can go ahead and start using those because I've got my digital drawing tool. Um, oh, and one thing that you might be doing with your, with your traditional tools that I'm clearly not doing is coloring inside the lines. <laughs> Um, and that is because, um, unlike traditional mediums, so mediums that are on paper, uh, things like colored pencils and markers and all that stuff, uh, in digital it's just as easy to draw really messy and draw outside the lines and come back in with an eraser tool and clean up the edges. Versus in, with, with markers, say, like, you put a, a mark with a marker down and it's not coming off. It's down to stay. So um, so you always say that you want to draw inside the lines because once you draw outside there's there's no getting that line back. Um, but it's, it's a little bit of a different story when you're drawing in the computer. In the computer. And I'm just cleaning up those lines. Oh, and if you're if you're curious as to why my hand is sort of a, a different color, um, it's because of the the way that the camera settings are, and so I've I've set the camera um, up in a different way so that it can see the screen. So it just it, it makes my my hand look a little more orange. Um, just interesting camera effects, but. Um, yeah, I know that it, sometimes I can draw sort of slow, and you might be a really fast drawer. So if you want to um, want to make your crap really crazy, go right ahead. If you want to draw something else, um, you can just start over on another piece of paper. Um, but yeah, feel free to go crazy and add add whatever you want because it's your drawing. I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of light, um, light sort of red. It's trying to give the illusion that, that the light's shining from above and um, you usually want to paint the light in some sort of way because that's what gives a, a character dimension is to imagine light and imagine how light is falling on an object and then draw that uh, that effect. We've got the eyes here. I'm gonna start in the background. I know I, I caught these plants before, but I think they're more like, like maybe sea anemones or uh, <laughs> or. Um, corals or something. They're definitely not anything that exists in real life quite like that. Um, uh, they're absolutely something I made up because I thought the shape would be fun. Here's a purple rock, which also I'm not sure if that exists, but whatever. We're in a world where our crabs have kind of goofy smiles, so maybe it's acceptable to have everything else uh, be a little silly. We've got some shadows on the rock with a darker color. Shadows are, are really important for pictures, especially, um, I don't know if you've ever drawn a picture and everything is sort of in a different place on the page and you've sort of thought about like, oh, I want to draw a crab, let's draw a crab in this corner. And oh, I won't really want to draw a rhinoceros, let's draw that down here. Um, and you wind up with all of these different things sort of in a bunch of different places. Uh, but they're not really sitting on the ground, which is which is fun because that means that they're floating in the air <laughs> or that they're existing in some sort of other dimension where the ground doesn't exist, which is also really cool. Um, but if you want to give your characters and your settings weight and a sort of reality, then you have to put them on the ground and give them a shadow. 
and sort of make them sit still <laughs> a little bit like um, like things in real life do. And I guess I should explain what I'm doing when I go other places on the screen that aren't on the drawing. Um, so when I when I move around like that, sometimes, like you just saw, um, I'm changing the color. Uh, sometimes, right, like right now, I'm deciding I don't like that color very much, and I'm going back and um, changing what I did before. And then sometimes I'm changing the size of the brush, or what the brush is doing, whether it's behaving like crayon, or like colored pencil, or like paint. I kind of like how... Um, since the character is this really warm color, it's this really bright red, uh, the stuff all around it can be these cool colors. Uh, there are a few different tools that we use when we're illustrating, and one of them is um, sort of hue is what we call it. It's the color. So it's like red or blue or green. That's what the hue is. And another tool is the saturation that's how bright the color is. So most of the, if you have crayons, all the crayons in your box are probably really saturated. That means there's so much of the color packed in there. Um, versus if you are to look outside and look at the real colors in the world, like think of like uh, a tree trunk or something. Um, all of those colors tend to be a little more muted, a little bit more gray uh, than if you just were to to get a color straight out of a crayon box. Um, the colors that I've used in my book are pre all pretty saturated, they're pretty bright, um, and I think that's something that I'll continue to, to work on. It felt right for this story because of how sort of, um, how cheerful and squishy the characters are, but maybe if I make another story that won't be the right solution. Um, and it's, sometimes it's exciting to, uh, to think about what a book should look like just because of what the story is about. And anyway, the, the last uh, um, uh, type of thing we talk about when we talk about uh, colored tools is um, value. And that's how light or how dark something is. And you can really bring a lot of attention um, to something if something really dark and really light are right next to each other. So if you look at, at what I'm drawing right now, the, um, the crab's mouth and eyes are super dark and its background is super light and so those two things together make you instantly look at the eyes and nowhere else. Plus red. We always like to look at red. I'm adding some texture because texture is something that is really easy to get when you're drawing on paper, it just comes out naturally because of the physical objects grinding against each other um, and making texture happen, but in the digital space you have to really work for that and intentionally add it because um, there's no free texture that's coming from your paper or from your uh, pencils or crayons. I'm just adding some details, making things stand out a little bit more. Um, some people don't like outlines very much, but I sometimes I do. <laughs> I feel kind of funny about it. All right, and I'm going to go back and add some little dots to these corals. Um, but, uh, as you can see, they're white, <laughs> or like, they're light colored, and if you were drawing with pencils, you really couldn't do that. If you, if you put down a, a dark shape, you couldn't go back and add a light, uh, detail on top of it, it just wouldn't show up. Um, but in digital tools, that's less of a concern, and you can change the properties of your brushes, um, much more easily. Just adding dots, dot, 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 dot. I'm sure you guys have drawn some very exciting stuff by now. Enough time has passed that there's got to be some really cool drawings happening.
So um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, drawing along with me. Um, it's been really fun. And of course, uh, this is not the only way to draw a crab. You could draw an infinite number of different looking crabs. And that's one of the exciting things about art is that your crabs probably look different than mine that we were just drawing together. Um, uh, but anyway, I was going to say that now that you have this crab character, you could keep running with that and make a story about a princess crab or a battle crab or a fire-breathing crab or whatever kind of crab you like. Or you could make a make a story about yourself and what you had for breakfast this morning and what you're going to do this evening. <laughs> and both of those books would be super wonderful. <laughs> so. Um, I hope that you write about whatever you want to write about, uh, even if you don't have words yet, because just, just because a kid doesn't know how to write yet, that doesn't mean that you can't write a book, because you can always tell it to someone else and ask them to write it down for you. Um, so yeah, I, I had a lot of fun being here with you today, and I um, just really wanted to thank the Brentwood Library and Lindsay and Liz for letting me put this together. And um, uh, I hope that you guys have a good summer.